Pietro Fittipaldi, I figure with the rate you're going as a rookie, people need to get to know you. Because I don't think you're going to be farting around in the back and kind of being forgotten about. So let's do that. Let's do a get to know Pietro Fittipaldi. Obviously come from a family that a lot of the world knows in motor racing, but not everybody might know the exact lineage, dad, grandpa, who, what. Run us through how we got to you. Yeah, so um, first, good to be talking to you. Thanks for inviting me on, on the show. <laughs> no, so basically, Emerson's my grandfather. My mom is his oldest daughter. Uh, my dad's side of the family has nothing to do with racing, so it's all my mom's side of the family. I have Christian also, who's my mom's cousin. I consider him my uncle, but he's my mom's cousin. Hello, so Christian. yeah. <laughs> and then Max also, Max Pappas is, is an uncle of mine. He's married to my mom's sister. So that's sort of the family of racing. And Enzo, who's my brother, who's in the Ferrari Driver Academy, racing Formula Four, he is, he's my brother. Because some people think he's like my cousin, and he's my brother. So that's the whole sort of family tree of racing. We've got another one we're gonna have to be interviewing here soon. So Pietro, one of the cool things that I'd love for you to tell folks about is you've been impressive here on your IndyCar debut so far on an oval. Uh, you're, you're not new to ovals, and you aren't necessarily someone who spent a lot of time in open wheel cars on ovals. Tell us about some of the crazy things you've driven to make this a little more familiar. Yeah, so it's my rookie time on an oval with an open wheel car with the Indy car, but I have driven on ovals before. I used to race late models. At, the best. Yeah, Hickory Cream Motor Speedway. I was 14, 15 at the time. I won the, the late model championship there in, back in 2011. And then in 2013, that's when I went to Europe, and that was all full, you know, single seater, open wheel, road course stuff. So it's been a couple of years, probably like six six years or so since I've been on an oval but we had the test here at February so I was able to get up to speed and we had a pretty you know the re the race weekends go by so fast man you have like one practice of 60 minutes and straight into qualifying everything seems to go really quick but it was a really good effort yesterday by, by, by the team car was really good it was a bit unfortunate that we were so early going out yeah, yeah. because um, the, the first couple guys that went out the times were a bit slow sort of like practice I said and the track is similar but when I went out, the car felt really good. And I was like, oh man, like this is gonna be good. But I felt like I left a bit on the table. And then Craig, Sebastian's engineer, came to tell me, uh, asked me after before Sebastian out, how's the car? And I said, I didn't want to jinx. I didn't say the car's good for pole, but I said, listen, the car's really good right now. Wow. And I think you can do it. Then with my engineer, Mike, after I went like, listen, if Sebastian does everything okay, track stays the same, he's gonna pull it, so. Let's talk a little bit about your other racing preparations, not just in Europe, but also here. I remember there was some news about you were at Sonoma Raceway doing some testing there. It seems like, tell me if this is correct, like your family has really said, we're not just gonna have you focus on one thing and master that discipline. It seems like there's been an effort to say, try this, try that, go to Europe, come here. Seems like you've built up at a young age, a lot of experience in a lot of different things. Is that paying off? Yeah, especially, you know, when, when I went from the late models to the open wheel. I raced the British Formula Renault Championship. I won the championship there in 14. Went to Formula 3, so I got experience with Formula 3 cars. I won a Formula 3 Asian, ser Asian Series in 15 and 16. And then last year racing these really fast cars, the World Series 3.5, yeah, yeah. we won that championship. So I've been sort of driving a lot of different cars, and especially the last four months, I drove the LMP1 with Porsche. I did the Formula E uh, test with Jaguar. I drove a Super Formula. I'm racing Super Formula also this year. So it's been giving me a lot of experience with different cars, you know, talking with different teams and stuff, learn how to work with new people, but also sort of on how fast I adapt to things, like to jump in a car and after a run be on it sort of thing. You know, that's it. It's helped me being able to adapt really quick to different scenarios and different cars. Pietro Fittipaldi, boys and girls. I think we're going to see some pretty cool things coming from you this year. Last question, knowing that you were on that European track, we have you here now, if you're looking to the future, do you like what you've seen in IndyCar to consider, again, consider, or is Formula One still that gleaming thing that's attracting you? No, listen, I really like IndyCar. I've always loved it. I used to watch it. You know, the year I was born, my grandfather stopped racing, but I would watch my, both my uncles race. I went several times to the Indianapolis 500. It's a dream for me to be racing there this year. It's going to be amazing. And I really like what I'm seeing. I think the series is on a big, big rise. The cars are great to drive. And I'm really excited. I'm excited. 
That was an awesome non-answer here from Fittipaldi. All right, good luck tonight, kid. Thank you. Appreciate it.